Hey guys, in my last video, I showed you how to create a backing track for your students using music notation software and Logic, and um, how to combine those clips uh, that students send you together into a uh, movie of all of them playing together. And I was thinking about different ways that you can uh, make a backing track for students if you uh, don't want to type in all of those parts into Finale but maybe you have a recording of the piece. And today I'm gonna to show you how to take a recording of a piece that maybe you got from a publisher's website and how to make that into a backing track for your students. So this is Lullaby by Hofeld, and um, we're gonna make this recording into um, this that has a backing track along with it and a count in and it One, stays per two three perfectly rhythmic um and it doesn't have a lot of rubato speeding up and slowing down um, other than what's indicated in the score so let's go ahead and get started we're going to open up logic and we'll go to File New. And we'll let it create track. And the recording, you want to get the tempo pretty close. I know the recording of this piece is about 64. And, and you can change that later um, if you need to. And I know it's about, uh, or it is in 3-4. It's about 64. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just drag in that recording from the publisher there we go okay and the first thing we're going to do is put the playhead about where the piece starts and we'll zoom in all the way here we'll delete this track and we will zoom in pretty far horizontally. We'll put the playhead about where the piece looks like it wants to start. We'll zoom in a little bit more. It looks pretty good. Okay, and I'll press Command T delete that zoom back out and I will take this recording and drag it so it starts right on beat one so I'll turn the metronome on it'll go along with it for a little bit but then after a while of course it won't match anymore okay we're going to add a software instrument and we are going to play in the tempo of the um, of the quarter notes and you can use whatever note values you want but we'll use quarter notes so I just went to file or uh, right click new software instrument track double clicked on the eighth notes that popped up here and I chose the Latin sound okay and I'm also going to open the editor and I'm going to press command K to open up the musical typing the sound that I like the best is this, um, for this purpose, is these claves that are the E flat above C5. So I see that I'm on C5 already, but if I wasn't, I can use these arrows to click around and get in the right octave. And I see that that E flat, if that's C5, then that E flat is the note E, or the uh, key on my keyboard, E, I should say. So you can press that with your keyboard. Um, so we're going to make sure that metronome is off because it won't really go along with it. And I'm going to press record and play in the quarter notes. Two, three. And you can hear that they're all pretty late. There's just, um, my computer can't really register those very accurately while I'm making a video. Um, so I'm going to turn the video off and, and press those in in just a little bit. But I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, if you want to 
slow the recording down to press those in. I find that's really helpful a lot. So I'm going to press Command F and it's going to turn on or open up flex time. And you can drag or go down to polyphonic. Make sure this is um, lit up. And then I can change the tempo of the project and it will follow me. So I'm going to press 48. It will slow it way down. And that can help you play in that rhythm or that tempo more accurately. Two and three. That one, that one registered real late. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to go through the whole piece and play in those quarter notes. And I'll be back with you when I'm done with that. Okay, guys, I just finished um, pressing in all of those uh, tempo of all the quarter notes there. So um, making sure flex time is still on. I'm going to change the tempo back to 64. Press Enter. And I'm going to listen back to it and make any adjustments um, down here. When you're making those adjustments, you can actually just um, click on the little note and drag it around and then listen back to it. So here we go. all pretty good um, so I'm going to speed the video way up while I edit the rest of these Okay, I just finished making a few minor corrections on um, the tempo of those quarter notes and the placement of them. And what I'm going to do now is turn off the flex timing for that track. And I'm going to go to track, global tracks, tempo track, show tempo track. Okay and I will right click and choose beat mapping. Okay, and I will choose, make sure this region that we just um, were working on is selected and choose beats from region. And we pressed in quarter notes, so choose whatever note value you pressed in and press okay. Now the tempo of our project matches the tempo of the um, recording so we're going to delete that track now we're done with it okay now we're going to click this track right click go to tempo and write project tempo to audio file okay make sure that the um, flex time was turned off um, for those previous couple steps and then turn it back on and you see all of the um, mappings of all the location of all the beats so I'm going to click in here in the tempo track. I'm just going to press delete and delete all that data. And I'm going to make our tempo, just make it a nice tidy 60 beats per minute. So if we zoom back out, see the whole track. Anything that was slowed down is turned gray. Anything that is sped up turns white. And anything that's about the same tempo as before, um, or about the same speed, is um, still blue. So we're going to find a good tempo that has kind of an even mix of all of them. And 64 is pretty good, 65, um, that's pretty good too. I'm going to choose one that has a little bit more gray um, than the white because since we took out all the rubato things, probably a little bit slower tempo is nice. So now we have a recording that will match the um, metronome. So I'll turn the metronome on. The metronome is steady now, and the recording matches the metronome. So it'll sound a little funny sometimes, but um, 
for a backing track, it'll work just fine. And for the most part, it sounds pretty good. Sometimes the vibrato is a little bit slow in some of those uh, gray sections. Okay, the next step, um, if this is applicable to your piece, is to edit any um, tempo changes that need it. So I'm going to right click in here and turn, take away beat mapping. And I'm going to zoom way in on the tempo track. And I'll come and open up the first violin part. I'm going to program in the most difficult tempo change and um, do that slowly. And I'll do the other ones very quickly because they're similar. Okay, so this says diminuendo, e ritornando. I think we'll start the ritornando right here, actually, along with the diminuendo because that marking is kind of ambiguous. I think that's a musical decision. So we'll start at 79 and through the uh, beat 2 of 82. And then beat 3 of 82 is going to be very, very slow. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go all the way to 79 and it starts right here. And I'm just going to click right there. We'll put a little dot there. And then for 80, I'm going to zoom out just a hair so I can see the whole thing. There we go. So beat 3 of 82 is where those two fermata notes are. So that look like 82.3 on here. It's okay. And I'm going to drag this down until see if I can get them to turn um, blue because that will be the it'll match the original tempo so it's still too fast even though there we go so 11's too slow 12's too slow 13's too slow 14's too fast so we'll keep it at 14 okay so it starts right here we're going to drag this guy and we'll put most of the return on at the very end especially since um, that, since there are those two formatas. Okay, so drag that handle down. I'm just kind of looking until these aren't white anymore because that means they're too fast. So that looks pretty good. So let's listen to that. Start from 79. <laughs> Um, so that will work. That's pretty good. You could play around with that more. And I'm going to go and do the other two with the video sped up just to save some time. Okay, I've programmed in all of those tempo changes. So you can see those, um, those three um, times that that was necessary. And what we're gonna do now, we deleted those um, tracks that we recorded in. So now we're going to go ahead and do our click track. So we will use the pencil tool and we can just do it right down here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit vertically. Okay, so make sure the pencil tool is selected here. And I like that same clave sound for the downbeat. I noticed that there's kind of this bug where it starts playing before measure one. So I'm going to drag this out here and measure later and pull the left side of that oops to there we go so it sh you should see that region start right on beat one and then we'll 
do wood block high and wood block high and muted triangle and eighth notes throughout. Okay. Now I will take this guy, use this tool with that repeating symbol, and drag it all the way to the end there. Maybe that last bar is pretty empty, so I'll do it there. Okay. Um, something else I should have done first, probably, I'm going to press Command A, and I'm going to move everything four bars later to give us some room for our count in. So I'm going to move it to bar five. So I press Command A, everything is selected. That'll move the tempo data with it. Okay, now I can click on that, unselect everything, and I'll drag this back there. You could use a two bar count in. I think two or four is a good idea. Now, since I moved it, I'm gonna extend that. Okay, that should be good. And the last thing I'm gonna do is new audio track. And I am going to record, starting at measure four, a four bar um, count in. So making sure the count in is selected. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. And that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna pull this back. Add a little bit of pre-roll there. And then take off any sound of me clicking the mouse or whatever. And then we're done. I'll start just to save time. Start it at bar three. One, two, three. Okay. Let's hit all those spots with the tempo changes. That's what the music asked for. Um, I think that might be a little too much, but I might edit that later. fix a couple of these. I'll probably speed up the video a little bit. Um, I'm kind of matched the recording, but for whatever reason that just didn't, to me, didn't work that well. Okay, I finished making some minor edits to the uh, tempo track, and I think we are done. So I'm going to press Command A and select everything. I always forget that step. And I'll do share, song to music, or however you like. And I'll just call it lullaby. Click track, and I'll just call it final. And make sure you check that. And it will bounce through there. And let's listen to it. One, 
two, three. Sounds nice. Balance is good. If I wanted to, I could have adjusted any of these things for the balance, but it was pretty good. Slide those up or down, make ladder softer. And I have the click track go a little bit longer, just so students hopefully don't, um, as soon as they finish that, don't go and um, finish their last note, run up and press the stop button. They'll stay still for just a second or two. Um, anyway, I hope this is helpful, and hopefully this has given you the tools to take an existing recording that you may have already and create a um, backing track for your students to play along with. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or I can help you uh, in any way.